back to our Beatrice YouTube channel. Today I'm going to learn how to make this beautiful teardrop key o neckline dress with brush effect on the sleeve. It's an A-line dress and it has this gather ruffle at the hem. It's really a beautiful tutorial and it's beginner friendly. If this is something you like to learn, kindly stay tuned to the end of this tutorial. Thank you. Okay, so for this tutorial, I'm using this two yards of fabric, but if you want yours to be fuller or bigger, you can use three to four yards, okay? But I have just two yards, so that's what I'm going to be using. And I folded my fabric by the yard that I have. So the fabric is folded into four. I'm putting the back and front together. There's not going to be any zipper allowance on this because I'm just going to open it on the back so that the head can pass through it. So, what you just need to do now is to take your shoulder measurement. The shoulder I'm working with is 15 divided by 2 is 7.5. So, I have 7.5 inches there. And then here, I'm going to go down by 1 inch from my shoulder slope. For my neck depth, I'm, width, I'm working with 3 inches by 1 for the back and 3 inches by 3 for the front. So, I'm going to connect that with my... I'm doing this slant with my straight ruler and then the neckline is going to be connected with my curved ruler okay so the length of this is my knee length minus the gathers remember there's a gather at the hem so for the gathers I'm using 10 inches so my actual gun length is <coughs> excuse me is 40 inches so for the gathers I'm using 10 so I'm deducting the 10 that's going to leave me with 30 inches so the total length that i have here is 30 inches for the upper part of the dress okay so now if you want it a little bit fitted you can take your waist measurement so i'm going to take my handful measurement first and that's nine inches so i'm connecting that and on that point you're going to take your bust the bust i'm working with is 44 divided by 4 is 11 so I'm adding half an inch is that's 11 and a half and then one inch for sewing so like I said you want it a little bit fitted on the waistline you can take your waistline my waist is 16 inches so you just shape it a bit so the waist I'm working with is 30 36 inches 36 inches divided by 4 is 9 so I'm going to be adding ease to that as well and then I'm going to add my seam allowance that's if you want it fitted a bit so to do that you're just going to connect your waist to your hip and then for the hem okay my hip is 46 so 46 divided by 4 is 11 and a half okay so I have 11 and a half inches here so you can add between 4 to 6 to 7 or 8 to 4 to 6 inches is okay depending on how why do you want it to be on the hem but like i said i'm using just two years so after my actual measurement i just have three and quarter so that is what i'm going to be using in my case i hope you can see that okay my hip is actually 46 for six divided by four is 11 and a half which is what i have here so if you have enough fabric you just add between four to six inches to your hip for your hem okay so from there now the next thing is for you to connect to your hem like this okay so this shape is if you want it a little fitted on the waistline if you want it to be fitted on the waistline what you just need to do from your hem old area here you just connect it straight like this okay you just connect it straight like this to your to your hem okay so that way you can see the inches that we have taken off by just fitting it so now all of these two inches is not going to be is going to it's not going to be removed from your waistline so everything is just going to be big but i just want it a little big a little fitted so i'm just leaving mine like this so after that now i'm going to take my curve driller and then draw out my hammer curve so i can now cut this off i'm going to cut the back neckline first and remove the back remember we have a style at the front so is me cutting off the sides together both front and back and then i cannot separate the, the back to work on the front i'm cutting the back neckline first as well 
so after cutting this out now i'm just going to open it up and remove the back so after removing back i'm going to fold this again and cut out okay so i'm going ahead to cut out the front as well so for the design for the teardrop design in front you decide the side you want it to be for me i want it to be on my left side so what you just need to do is open up your bodies so after opening up your bodies on my shoulder area i'm going to measure two inches from my neck point you can do two inches or two and a half or two inches is fine for me by the time i hem it on both sides i'll be left with around one and half inches or so which is fine so now i have it there then the next thing i'm going to use my free hand to connect to just form like a teardrop design on my neckline area okay towards you can see the way i'm planting my hands towards the center front so i just so just connect it like that and take it back to your neckline so you can see what we have so try as much as possible so if you can use the cup for this you can use it you can use your free hand you can whichever one is fine so after connecting like that so from the third drop you're going to bring in your scissors and then you're going to cut it out you can decide to cut it open completely here but i just want it to be here i don't want it to to cut it open so to cut it easily i'm just going to make an incision here then and from there i'm going to trace the teardrop pattern out carefully so using my scissors i hope you can see this so i'm just following the the chalk mark that i have there okay so i don't want to open it completely to my shoulder so you can see where i'm stopping then i'll go over to the other side as well and then create the other one and then stop it before my shoulder as well so this is what i have so you can see what i have here so if you want yours to get to your shoulder it's fine so now i have my front and this is the back so for the chair drop i'm going to be using my bias to turn it or you can cut a facing for it and then you flip it over and use your bias to turn your neckline so for the back remember the neck is small so i'm going to use my i'm going to open my back by around four inches so that i can wear this easily then i'm going to take it to the sewing machine and join it after turning the keyhole i'm going to place my front on the back sew it on the shoulder then join the side so i'm going to set it aside now and cut out the sleeve and the lower part okay so for the sleeve i have my fabric folded into four i'm cutting both the front and back together my hand hole is nine inches nine inches on fold okay but i want to it's like a wall sleeve i'm going to be using elastic to gather it on the sleeve area and also i want it gathered a bit on the hem so i'm going to measure around 11 inches so i'm adding two inches to that and then i'll add my hem seam allowances making it 12 to 13 inches so i have 13 inches folded here nine inches actually my sleeve length i'm adding about 12 inches to i'm adding about two inches to that nine inches for the excess that i want and then i'm adding one inch allowance so i fold this to 12 inches so after folding this the length of the sleeve that i am working with remember i'm working with the two years of fabric so i just have 17 inches so if you have more you can increase your length to about 20 inches so that by the time you gather it you can drag it up so i have 17 inches here for my calf size i'm going to go down by five inches okay because this is a puff sleeve and then i'm going to use my free hand to connect that to the end of the sleeve so after connecting it i'll come in with my scissors and then cut this out remember we're using elastic to shape it so there's no need for you to take your brand sleeve measurement so this is what the sleeve looks like so before we remove it now i'm going to notch it 
at the midpoint on the hem because we are going to be using our elastic to drag it here so it's very important for you to notch the midpoint you can even use your ruler to connect it so that when you're passing your elastic you're not getting confused so i have that mark there so the last thing to cost now is the hem remember for the gown the actual length is 40 inches i deducted 10 inches for the hem so that left me with 30 inches so to complete the full gown now i've cut out a long strip of fabric the length is 20 in the length is 12 inches because i'll need to hem it okay so i have 12 inches here so for the upper part the one we are sewing to the bodies you can just weave it but i don't have a sedger here right now so i'm going to go ahead and hem it on both sides very tiny like this on both sides then after hemming it i'm going to bring it back to show us how we're going to couple this so i have two of this the length of the, the length is 12 inches and the width of each of them is about so the width is about that's like twice what i have on my hem is about 60 inches the length of the fabric so i'm adding it separately to both the front and back that is why i have them in two pieces like this so the first thing i'm going to go and do now is to sew my bodies just like i explained i'm going to sew it on the shoulder i'm going to turn the keyhole that we have here and then i'm going to turn it on the neckline sew it on this side then i'll bring you back to show us how we're going to be sewing the sleeve and the lower part okay so i just want to quickly show us a tip to hem this keyhole part easily so now remember after creating your keyhole what you just need to do is to lay a fabric okay right side facing right side on your keyhole part you can see i just laid a plain fabric and then i went ahead to hold it round with my pin so that i can stay in place so after holding it round with your pin all you just need to do is to sew around it so when you sew around it you just come with your scissors and then you cut the lining part just the same way we traced out the key o. okay so this is going to make it really easy for you so now here you're going to come in with your scissors and then trace out the key o on the lining as well okay you, can, you should trace out after you have sewn it that way you can see that it's already sewn together and it's in place so it's not going to disturb the shape that you have there and it's going to make the work really easy for you so you can see that i'm just cutting around it so after cutting around it now all you just need to do now you can turn this to the right side so and then reduce this so the barest minimum for aiming so i'm just cutting around this as well and then i'm just reducing make sure you're not cutting your main fabric together with it so after i did this to the minimum you just need to push this inwards the lining you push it inwards like this and then you iron it flat so after ironing it you can if you don't want to see any seam line on the upper part you can use your aiming glue to iron it down but i don't mind so what i'm just going to do now is to fold this back to the wrong side and then i'm going to hem it by folding it twice like this and then i'm going to aim it around i hope you understand that so after turning it out you can see what it looks like so this is what it looks like on the wrong side and this is what it looks like on the right side you can see how neat this is so now you can decide to just aim it like this or just use your emmy glue to gum it together if you don't want to see your seam line so you can just search these rough edges so i think i'm just going to use the aiming glue to gum it together because i really like the way it turned out without the seam line okay so i've gone ahead to sew the bodies you can see I joined it together on the side and on the shoulder then after joining it i used my bias to turn the neckline so i don't have this color of bias i'm still going to change it so i just have to use this white so that i can finish up this tutorial so uh, likewise the one i used to aim the key oh you can see that i've neatly turned it so i'm going to go ahead and use my aiming gum to glue it down so this is what it looks like so far okay so 
removing the pin and i'm going to use my aiming gum to glue it down so this is the key hole this is the button hole and i'm going to go fix a button here so this is what the body looks like okay so now the next thing I is to work on this sleeve so to work on this sleeve i have gone ahead to turn to earn the lower part of the sleeve so now emmy needs we going to create the casing that i need to gather the hem and i remember we indicated a line at the center so this is going to be a bit short because my fabric is not enough so remember i just measured 17 inches and after i mean it it went to around 16 inches so now i'm going to cut an elastic of around 10 inches to smoke it at this center part so now i'll just take my my elastic and then measure the 10 inches and i'll cut it out so after cutting it out now you're just going to place it on one hand and then place on the other hand to leave in half an inch to sew it to your shoulder so after placing it like this you're going to drag it and then sew on it so it automatically gather this for you and then you pass elastic to the hem so i've done this for one of the sleeve and this is what it looks like you can see the smoky effects that i have on the center of the sleeve and then here i just use my elastic to gather the hem so this is what one of the sleeve looks like i'm going to go ahead and fix the other one the same way i did this so now for the hem remember we cut out the fabric of 10 inches 12 inches by 60 inches and then i said i'm going to do it separately so i'm going to have to do the back so i'm going to do the front for us to see now so the total length of my front is around 30 inches the hem of my front is around 30 inches so i cut two of it which was 60 inches and i showed us so i just went to aim it on both sides and then i ran a gather stitch on top like this so i gathered this back to this 30 inches remember i have 60 inches like this so i gathered it back to 30 inches so when you want to sew it now you're going to place it so you can see the way i sew this instead of sewing it like the normal way we sew right side facing right side and then we use it to turn in this case i'm not going to be sewing right side facing right side the fabric that we gathered we are going to be placing it on this like this okay this gathered part you are going to place it on it and sew not that you are going to sew in a way that you are going to flip it and use it to turn so i've done this for the back you can see it is sewn now i can see that i just placed it on it like this to sew so i'll do the same thing for the front and then i'm going to close the side hop so i go and do this now then we'll take it to the mannequin so that we can see what it looks like so i've used the aiming glue to gum down the keyhole area so you can see how neat and flat it is laying now so this is what the full feel of the dress looks like this is the sleeve you can see the rush effect that we created on the sleeve using our elastic and this is the gathers that we have around the hem so this is what the full view of the dress looks like you can see how beautiful and simple it is to make this so i used just two yards of dull face fabric for this you can use crepe fabric but it's better you use around three to four yards so that you can have something really full and beautiful i hope you enjoyed making this beautiful tutorial with me if you enjoyed it let us know in the comment section like comment and subscribe to our channel and i'll see you in the next one bye